Welcome to Steve 87th, Puget Sound and Pacific Railroad. Hi everyone, this is Steve, Steve 87th, PSAP Railroad, or Puget Sound and Pacific. Um, this is my channel and I just wanted to invite you guys to, to come along and watch as I build my railroad, uh, build up some kits, do some uh, kit bashing, um, and running trains like the one behind me. So if this is what you guys like to watch, uh, stick around for a while and uh, see if you like the channel. Hey everyone, Steve87 here. Just a real quick update. I'm starting to do a bunch of kit bashing stuff. Uh, first thing I did, this is an old concrete plant that I had, concrete mixing plant that I had. Um, there happens to be a secondary truckload area that's a big dump bin that I'm going to have to scratch build. But I found this, um, cut it all the pieces, shorted it up, put in the cross beams. I'm going to put this section on there, which is actually going to hold the bins that uh, are the drop bins for the trucks. The trucks will actually fit in that driveway thing. Um, so that'll be, that was a fun thing to do for a little while. Um, also, uh, from this kit, the cement factory from IHC um, that I had laying around, um, I took their tanks that they've got so that I don't have to build so many tanks. Um, so they've got some nice silos that I'll be able to use that come with their own little stands and all that and even have a cement pad to put them on, which is kind of nice. This one that I took apart also has uh, more things that I can use and it also has really detailed uh, auger um, pumps there to move things around so I might be using these on a few tanks um, also made an order from uh, Walters to get some more tanks for for my uh, well not the tank farm but more bins for storage this one this house here um, I've only taped it up because there has to be on this side I have to put a big grain dispensing tower up here uh, I don't know how high that's going to be yet and all. I have to fi figure that out. And then this is a little side house that comes with this building. So I haven't even built the third building that comes with this. But this one has an open end that is supposed to attach to that somewhere. I don't know where it was supposed to attach to. Um, because this has got windows and stuff all the way around. So I had to go ahead and make up um, a siding for that. Um, that one actually has to get a door into it due to the fact that there is no doors on this except for the loading doors. So this actually fits between these two buildings. So this will be over there. Um, I haven't quite figured out everything yet. This will go in here and then the loading racks kind of go in there and then there'll be um, yeah, there'll be green bins here. The dry bin and all that will go here along with the dryer that I've already kind of made. And then there's a couple of water tanks or chemical tanks that I had to do. So I was looking around trying to figure out how to make them. And uh, so I went to the hardware store today and got a couple of two inch caps. Um, I'll just have to make some things here to go on top of the caps for the filling areas. Uh, this has been kind of a fun thing trying to get all of that off. You can see here that that's nice and clear of that information. Um, had to do it with a file and then uh, sand it on down. And then I got these other littler ones too that look kind of the same way. I have to cut all those apart. So that's kind of where I'm at right now and I'll show you more of my progress as I go along. Okay, so what happened was is when I was going through all my parts and all that, there's one thing that I couldn't find. That was the loading bins. So and there's nothing available commercially. So this is a picture of the loading bins. You can see that there's actually two of them that I have to wind up scratch building. So this movie is actually gonna be devoted to the scratch building of these um, filling bins over at my build. So let's see how this all came out. All right, everyone. I'm gonna kind of document a quick um, scratch build, even though it's not going to be that quick. 
So I've got this section over here that I've got to put a filling station at basically for the trucks. So what I've done is I've created uh, what's probably going to be a monster um, for this is what I need to build there. So I'm not going to replicate that exactly, but what I'm going to do is I've got this section up there, and if you notice, there's the cross beams that are there. So I've got this cut out, which is hanging down far enough from this side that it'll connect onto a truck, right? And then I gotta make up the sides and all that. So what I'm doing is, is I'm having to scratch build that, and then that square section will go right up here, and then I'll have to make another top up here for all of the, the uh, feed to go into and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of document, you can see right here, I am using uh, styrene. I'm actually using, oh, I forget what it is. I think I'm using 0.4. Uh, 0 0.40 styrene to make these and uh, so I've got to make two of these and so you can see that I'm kind of mass producing them but there was one thing that I found out that I should have been able to do which is when I make one of these I should be able to just flip it around and then cut another one so I can have more styrene the good news is I got all these little triangles I got left here um, that I'll probably use for something because they're about the right size for a ramp. They're about five feet tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those up and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put all this together. So once you get all the pieces done, then the next fun thing is, is that you have to make sure that they're all the same height and the same width so that they work. So you can see here, there's some variance in that. So what we have to do is sand these down. So the two, th the things that you wanna do is you gotta pick two sides so that you can square this up. Once you square it up, then you can kind of put them together with some tape or something like that to hold them, and then go ahead and begin your sanding. Um, that way they'll be all matched up. Um, it would be great if I could have been able to duplicate this thing on a duplicating machine, but I'm kind of in a hurry, so I'm doing it uh, the little older way, and plus the only thing I have is a smaller chop it, and the, this one, because of the length of it, doesn't quite make the, the length that I want it to. So, for that, now i got to get stuck with sanding. So I'm going to go ahead and sand these so that they're all the same. All right, now that all those are done and sanded in the same size, you see here I made a little paper cardboard cutout of what it's going to look like. It's actually going to have a little bit of a longer draw into it rather than a square one. So the next thing we have to do is cut these sides, which are actually the same width because that's a square up there. Actually, they're a little bit longer up there but the sides also make them longer too. So we've got to cut some, some pieces to go up so, there. Now I've got to, now like I said, we're gonna do these long sides. There's a couple of ways to do it. I didn't really like it with the paper. It just wasn't working for me. So let me show you what I wound up doing here. If I can get my hand away from the front of the camera. This piece of plastic, you can see, fits in that side like it's supposed to. All right, it gives me a little bit of a wiggle room where it's gonna fit. Okay, so that was step number one. Step number two was to find the center of this piece. Okay, so once I found the center of this piece, because this piece is actually nine feet three scale inches, so the center was a little bit hard to find. Then what I did once I found the center was is I made sure that I had a two foot wide trough. So this is going to be a one foot by two foot trough that will basically dump it into. Now the next thing that I had to do was then take one of my pieces that's already been cut and we already said that this side is a little bit weird so we would have to do a, a size dimension. But if you notice, you can't just do it like that because it's the wrong size. So what I had to do was take my side, figure out where it was to the corner and then to where it hit to the two foot mark. Now I go corner to corner and then that's where I struck the top line on there. So that should be the size of the trough that's gonna go in there. Now, there's another fun thing that gets to be done after this is once I get this done, because this is solid, um, I haven't decided if I'm going to cut away for this to let this drop in as I glue it on top of there or what. I haven't decided that one yet. It may be easier just to do it that way and cut away from the top section than it would be to cut this in half where I need to cut it at um, and then glue bottom the bottom portion to it and then the top portion. So I'm probably going to wind up cutting the, uh, the deck there. But 
again, since you've got a compound angle, you can't just do it easily. Now, if you did this on a computer, you could probably could have already had the pieces and all the dimensions and sizes already done. But I'm doing it freehand and I'm doing it quickly, so I'm doing it this way the long way. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all these pieces out. And so you can see I need eight of them or four of them one for each side, and then that will give me my bottom bucket. All right, so once again, got all those cut. Um, there's four of them, stacked them all together. Now I gotta go ahead and start sanding like crazy on some of this, because for some reason the tops didn't come out the same length. I don't know why. But anyway, so that's my next thing to do. That's a lots of fun. Okay, now the fun is going to begin. Um, I'm going to use my Tamiya paint, or Tamiya, because it'll be able to just weld on on the inside so i'm going to use this as the jig um we're going to drop these in we're not going to glue them to the center section yet we're going to glue those first because i need to go ahead and do some work afterwards after i get the basic structure done because you saw that there's all those ribs that go around it and all so i got to get all that stuff done and i got to get that down so i don't want to actually glue it down the next half of it should be okay because it's just the square on the top which will be about the same height that this is right now and then it'll just be folded in on 45s up to the top to get to the to the top hatch so hopefully that'll go easier than this but the hopper was always the harder part so that's why i wanted to do that first so i'm going to go ahead and do this off camera and put this together because i'm sure it'll fall down quite a few times so um and plus i don't need to try to show you guys how to do that how to glue things together but i'll show you what it looks like okay. afterwards. and there you have it i've got some sanding to do i've got a get some of these to match up a little bit as i said i didn't put them in there because there's still some more um things to do see they uh they met up pretty well all the way across when they're actually installed they're going to look like this i've got to put the ribs around the outside of them and all but that's it they are done and they actually fit the right way that they're supposed to because the truck would pull underneath them just like that and then be filled up so just a word for the wise. Do you remember how in high school and stuff like that, we got into our geometry class and we hated compound angles? Well, still don't know how those guys made the pyramids, but these weren't that fun to make. <laughs> and you can see there's still some issues with them. Um, I don't know exactly how the, the two got so off from uh, making them, but that's what happens when you repeat pieces over. Instead of with measurements, you're just trying to use the two pieces. But that's the first part of it. The second part's going to be real easy. That's just going to be a big square around the top. And then, like I said, then there's the top piece to do. So um, I'm going to clean those on up and try to make the rest okay, of this. So, yes, just like Vinny has, um, I have one of these nice square little ones, too, that makes it really, really easy to do squares. You can see here, too, there's actually edges over here. So if you need to do... Uh, go-throughs you can do go-throughs as well but what i'm doing is i am putting together four sides that go up onto the top section um they're going to be the square part of the bin i decided on like five feet so they will sit on this portion and go around there i'm doing all four of them because i've got to do some modifications to some of them um to get them to fit on top and i just want to make sure that i get them the right way so once these are all glued and I flip them over and glue the other portion of the corner and they dry, I'll be doing sanding just like on the pyramids. And then we'll get those all together. That'll be finished on the top. And then the last thing to do will be the top 45 degree angle thing. Okay. Just wanted to keep you guys informed what's going on. Decided to start some construction on cutting this so that these will fit down in between. Um... Just to let you guys know, one of the things that really, really sucks is, is destroying a model that's intact without trying to destroy the model. So um, just take your time and lots of sanding. Here's a preview of what this is going to look like. I just have these taped together right now. So the last thing I got to do is the square part. And then once that's all done, then it's all about just doing the uh, um, details on it. Um, had to add a little bit of support there. Um, I actually was able to go ahead and cut out those areas underneath there, still giving some manway walks up there. 
I might put in some rails or something like that just to make it kind of neat. We'll put in some electrical boxes and stuff up there, hopefully to make it look cool. Maybe a control station is down here um, to make that look a little bit better and a, and a ladder going up in that direction over there. But that's kind of what they look like right now. They still need to be painted and some details added to it and all. But uh, that's what I got going on. So now I just got to finish off the top. Hope to show you guys that a little bit later. Always make the tops, which are going to be 45 degree angles. So the best way to do that, we get a box. We've already got a square box, right? So we just get a square on top of it. And then with our handy dandy magic back to geometry, we cut that four times on a 45 degree angle or actually across once and then across again. And we'll have all four sides and then we'll have to cut off a little part on the top to make it all good. And then we'll make two more pyramids. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that and show you what it looks like when it's done. Update, um, this is taking a little bit longer. So there's the top. Um, I got it wrong. Instead of doing 45s, they were supposed to be 60s. And then I had to cut the top so that uh, it could go in. So this is the mixer bin. And you can see here, I've started putting the ribs on, um, on that one and on this one. This is proving to be really, really fun. What I'm using is um, what is considered one by four um, in HO scale for plastic. And we're just standing them up and gluing them in place and they have to go all the way around. And then I'm going to cut these off so that they're all square and that they look. And then so when they get all painted, they should look really kind of cool. So um, I've got that to do. I've started on this one. The reason I've overlapped it is so that I have room to cut it straight. And then I started on the other square one. So and then once I do that, these are almost dry enough that I've got to sand them down a little bit, do some work on them and then do the same thing on that and then put on some extras and all that. So um, the other thing is, is it's supposed to be warm and sunny today, so I'm hoping to get these guys painted, um, as well as some of the other things that I need to get painted today. So that was a real quick update. Um, I forget how long, how many days this has been now. I think it's day three because it's now Monday. All right, um, I'll show you some more progress as I get going. And there we go. We've got those finished. That's what it's going to look like. Um, also kind of started to mock up how the layout's going to be. We've got the big tower. The drying tower will come off of the building that's behind it, which we don't have yet. Um, the dryer. These are going to be the uh, finished product storage and then the delivery system. We'll have a building over here and all. So, and I've got all of these to place yet. Plus I need to get a couple more of those medium-sized tanks and a couple more of those little tanks. They're on order and they're coming in. This is actually going to be for the actual feed at the feed plant. So I'm going to have like a, like one of the chicken places uh, done up. So um, there we go. So I will continue to show you some of the other stuff. Um, and I probably have a mail call coming in to show you what else I've gotten in the last couple of days. All right. Thanks for watching. And I uh, hope this was informative. And uh, give me comments, subscribe, whatever. You know, tell me how I'm doing or ask any questions. Thanks a lot for viewing.